Welcome back to the channel with your boy Damo Tenno and today we're going to be talking about a certain temple here in Nudeshino City which actually isn't too far away from my house so let's get into it Now the temple we're going to talk about today is one called Zuikoji Now where is this temple? Obviously it's in Nudeshino City but you can find it near the shopping district where all the shops and hot springs are. This is a pretty nice temple and a great place to visit for when you want to get away from the noise. But one might ask, how long has the temple been here? When was it built? How many times has it been burned down? Now let me take a few minutes to dispel your worries and answer those questions for you right now. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, as you can see, there's like 10 boxes here. And one of them, yes, is already showing. For some reason the animation, like order already messed up. So you guys already know that the temple was burned down for the first time. Sometime in the Ghana. Yes, it's the Ghana uh, period. Look it up, because I had to. <laughs> uh, and they don't know exactly when, uh, so it's already there. You already got the first one, and we'll see the second one uh, very soon. But let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, I didn't cover everything from the history, just 10 uh relatively interesting facts so the last thing actually on the list on, uh, will be in like the late 1800s so like nothing really happened like after like in the 1900s some things did happen they weren't that interesting though but let's go so we got in the oan uh, ninen what what, what what was that yeah it was built by a guy named mr udeshino no less uh it was founded by this man Founded in 1369. Nice. On to the next one. All right, we got a uh, Tensho Jugo Nen. Right, 1587. What happened? Mr. Ureshino leaves Ureshino City and cuts off all ties with, to the temple. Now, you can see that there is a 200 year gap between when it was founded and when Mr. Ureshino le leaves. And I'm just assuming that this is just one of his descendants. They didn't specify it was a descendant, but I also don't think Mr. Ureshino lived 200 years either. And then just decided to leave and cut off all ties with the temple. They don't explain why he cut off all ties either. You know, another uh, another question for another day. Boom, third one, uh, Ghana. Pretty sure it's not Ghana. I think it's Ghana. Again, I'm gonna I'm, I'm put it on here. But Ghana, sometime in between 1615, 1623, the temple was burnt down. Uh, no specific reason as to why it burnt down. It just burnt down. All right, oh, we got Kyoho, Kyoho Sanen, which is 1718. He has Kyoho, right? Yeah, Kyoho. Uh, 1718, what happened? The main temple, the study, and the team room, the tea room were finally complete. So after it burnt down, you know, they had to rebuild everything. I don't think they started immediately. So when they started rebuilding everything, it uh, those three things, the temple, the study, and the tea room, were completed in 1718. All right? Yes, yes, yes. On to the next. Oh, uh, Tempo Ninen. Yeah, these names are wild. Tempo Ninen in 1832. All right, we're starting to get a little bit more modern, you know, into the 1800s. What happened? Oh my God, another fire broke out in Ureshino Shiku, causing 56 buildings to be burned down and affecting many temple families. Temple families are called Danka, and they really just support the temple. Whenever the temple needs to like do some fundraising and get some money uh, built up for like new innovations and stuff, obviously the city will probably provide some money, but those, those Danka, those temple families, will also donate money. So you get money from the city and from the community. So many. But uh, why wow, this, this is right, and this says kind of second time. It's because the temple didn't fully get burned down like in the first time. I think certain parts of it did get affected. And, uh, you know, thus later, 
uh, I think actually in the next one, in Anse Ganden, 1854, uh, oh, I lied, that, that this is not where it happened, I think it's the next one, uh, they do have to do some reconstruction to the temple, I think they just really be, rebuild it, they actually like, just build a whole new temple again, uh, from scratch, but here, in 1854, we got the materials for the bone show. And the bone show is the type of temple bell. I think it's just a bigger bell than a normal uh, Terra no Kane. Uh, so, yeah, right. The materials uh, for, the temp for the bell, like the actual bell themselves, were commandeered to make weapons. And this is around the time when Perry and his uh, gunboats made it uh made it to japan i think he got there in uh, 53 so i think they were trying to fight fight back and perry is like nah we not having it on to the next one on say so three years later eight oh two years later sorry in 1856 rebuilt the main temple boom there it is that's exactly what i'm talking about so that's why i say you know it was about 20 years later a little bit over 20 years 24 years after the large fire broke out in the actual city and affected the Danka, the families, they rebuilt the main temple 24 years later. Maybe because the damage was, you know, starting to really affect the temple. Uh, this is all speculation. I haven't, I didn't do that much research uh, on it. This is really just stuff that uh, I found on the board that they have in front of the temple, and I just translated it. Uh, so there's not too much uh, depth. You know, and something like that. But on to the next one. In Meiji Rokunen, 1873, what we got? An elementary school was opened in the temple. Now, I don't. it wasn't like a full-fledged elementary school from what I can tell from the board. It was just that they had uh, elementary school students come and study there uh, from time to time, I believe. It's either time to time or they actually fully use the temple as a school for... Uh, elementary school students. I think it might, actually might be the la the latter. I don't I don't see why they would just have them come from time to time to study, and they probably just use the temple because they may not have really been using it for anything else, and they could probably just use it for the community, have the kids come and learn, uh, you know, the the curriculum while also studying some Buddhism, you know, some of that Zen, because uh, Zui Koji is a is a Zen shu, a uh, Rinzai shu. On to the next. Meiji Jugonen, 1882. What we got? They made a bigger and better boncho. So the bell, right, that they took back in uh, uh, 1854 to get those to make those weapons. They made a bit, bigger and better one. And then they also made improvements to that said bell in the Showa uh, Niju Gonen, or 1950. Right. And then finally, in Meiji Niju Rokunen, 1893. They built a stone gate in front of the temple. And yeah. That's it. Now obviously there's there's a there's a couple more things that was on the uh board, but they weren't like they really weren't that interesting. Uh at least and it is a subjective. I didn't think they were that interesting, right? Uh so I just decided to leave them out. These were really like the main things that like really stuck out to me. So I just wanted to share those with you guys real quick. But yeah. That's uh that's kind of a brief uh history uh, of of Zui Koji. But uh yeah. That's that's all that's all that's all for the history. The Koji Raireki Yojiku. So cool. So yeah, uh let's go ahead and talk about some of the characteristics of Zui Koji. guys just made it here to Zui Koji it's about five o'clock so the sun's just starting to set and man it looks nice out here it's gorgeous it's gorgeous let's take a look let's take a look at it man but I'm gonna go ahead and hop into these characteristics for you guys so let's do it okay guys now one of the first reasons here uh one of the first characteristics of uh, Zui Koji Close to the Shoteng Dai, the shopping district here in Nadeshino. So you got a whole bunch of shops, like literally lined up right out front. 
of the uh the temple not like directly out front but if you walk like 20 feet there they go and i'll just i'll just give you a little a glimpse walk right out there about 50 feet and you're already in the shopping district and you can go and get to uh visit the foot baths you know that i've been talking about and uh the onsen as well uh, and trying out a whole bunch of different unique udeshino uh foods and snacks and whatnot uh, for example, we have something called Dora Musuko. Uh, if I have a picture, I'll put it in. I don't think I have a picture. I might have a picture. Uh, and or uh, Yudofu, uh, which is basically, uh, because we're famous on sense, they put tofu in, they boil the tofu in onsen water. Uh, and it, you know, I think it makes it even more healthy. I'm not entirely sure why they do it, but it's actually pretty fire. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Uh, so yeah, you got that. Number two on the list. Uh, quiet. It's in a residential area. Nice and quiet, kind of away from the hustle and bustle, even though it's actually it's near the Shoten guy, near the uh, shopping district. You can't really hear that much. I think really all you can hear is the cars. Uh, saying, so you can't really escape that. But in terms of people, <laughs> I've been to this temple maybe four or five or four or five, maybe six times just for the video. Uh, and one time, you know, for, for like the very first time uh, when I came and I just discovered it. I have not seen one other living being at this temple. Never. Except for the people who actually live. They're like a family that's connected to the temple. Like the house is like connected directly to the temple. Except for them, I've seen them drive in a couple times. Uh, I haven't seen anyone else. But if you want to just come and bask in the in the templeness right in the the templeness this is the place to do it all right uh so come on through number three and probably honestly the final reason uh the wabi sabi feels the wabi sabi feels yes uh anybody who's you know studied japanese or japanese culture has probably heard the word wabi sabi at some point it's kind of like, you know, the perfect imperfections in the world, you know, being able to, uh, you know, truly uh, enjoy, understand, you know, that life isn't perfect and that's okay. There's beauty in imperfection. So, yeah, for like temples and shrines, you know, you expect them to be clean and pristine. You know, these are, well, the shrine is a holy place is where the gods are. But, you know, temples are pretty sacred too, you know, in the, in the, in the Buddhist uh, religion and the religion of Buddhism so you expect you, you have a certain expectation when you arrive and then you get here and you see all the moss you see the moss everywhere growing on the outside on the inside on the trees on the ground just about everywhere you also have the like they have these like butsuzo these kind of like mini Buddhas I believe they're Buddhas uh, don't quote me on that uh, but you have these Buddhas and you know, they're supposed to be, you know, full images of Buddha or whoever they are and, you know, pristine condition. But some of them have half a head, you know, cracks down the middle. And just seeing that kind of thing uh, is, it, it brings, it has a, brings a sense of calm to one's heart. You know, you see it like, damn, you know, you know, the people of the temple uh, do maintain it because uh, they have these little uh, white things in front of the temples, I mean in front of the uh, in front of the statues, and you can put flowers in them or water in them, and it's supposed to be for, uh, it's supposed to be like an offering. Uh, however, you can't you can't stop nature from doing what it does, right? You can try, but it's not gonna work. Uh, so with the moss that's growing all on them, uh, probably due to wind and just erosion you know that the, they're made out of stone so they're gonna they're gonna crack and they're gonna break and you see that and it's just like damn you just want you just, you just like it's, it's life this is life uh but enough of the philosophical talk uh those wabi those wabi sabi feels are are uh for real though they hit they hit right here uh so yeah really that's uh that's really about it um you got the wabi sabi feels working backwards wabi sabi feels nice and quiet not a soul in sight and it's actually relatively centrally located in the sense that you can get to the shops and stuff from here 
uh, relatively easily. You can you can walk there. You don't need a vehicle of any sort. Uh, so yeah, you can get those wabi sabi feels just about anywhere if you're looking for it, right? If you're if you're looking for the imperfections in, in, in certain things, or you're just looking at you know things that just you know that that, that just kind of harmonize. They work they work well together, but they're not perfect. Boom, wabi sabi. You know. You can you can almost always find that at a temple if it's not like, you know, they're not like actually actively removing the moss and stuff like that. But yeah. Now, uh, these characteristics, you know, I just listed pretty general. Uh, it's not like I went into great detail. I'm not I'm definitely not a temple buff. You know, I can't look at look at, say, like this pillar and be like, oh, this pillar was made from the same wood as a temple that's in Kyoto somewhere. No, it's, it's, it, it doesn't get that deep. Uh, I just enjoy going to temples and shrines and uh, letting you guys and, and sharing that, that experience with you guys. That's all I got for you guys. Uh, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. I, I don't do that often enough at the end of any of my videos. I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get into doing that. Uh, and let's do it again next time.